You think there's no systemic racism? I believe that it depends on how you define systemic racism. So if you're talking okay. about legal regimens of racism, no. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about history, it has after effects, of course. So I, I think there's a real problem with semantic overload in a lot of our political conversations. And when people say systemic racism, sometimes what they mean by systemic racism is history has consequences. You can't have 150 years of, oh, well, 300 years of slavery followed by Jim Crow and, uh, and that not have after effects, which of course is true. And sometimes what they mean is that every inequality in American public life is due to some systemic inequity that is currently taking place in the United States, which I think is absolutely 100% false. I mean, we certainly see that playing out in our criminal justice system. Are, are you going to deny that or are you going to say that, let's say, African Americans or Latinos are just inherently more criminal or I'm not going to say either of those things. I'm going right. to say that so as Right. So why are they overrepresented well, in our prisons? I mean, especially this may be, when you consider This may be beyond the scope of our conversation, but the right. answer is because not all groups commit crimes at the same level. I don't want to let this go because like what he says at the end there is really weird. Mhm. Mm like, okay, so if it's not genetics and that's good. <laughs> he said it's not genetics. Um, but what is it, right? I mean, what, what is his explanation of, of why people in some groups, you know, commit, uh, commit crimes at a higher rate than other groups? Uh, I mean, I guess we didn't quite get to it because the, the moderator cuts him off right after what we just played, but like, you know, that'd be such a fascinating question because I don't know how you answer that question as a conservative who, you know, thinks that, uh, you know, we don't need to like redistribute any resources. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've seen like, one of the things I like to do before a debate is consume a lot of the content that the person I'm debating mm -hmm. puts out. And so, um, I, it was really frustrating because I wanted to hear what his economic arguments were, but he of course talked a lot about cultural issues. And I get the sense that had he been given the chance to make his argument without being interrupted by the moderator, who then changed the subject entirely, he would have probably like leaned into this argument about culture, which, you know, I, it would have eaten up a, a huge part of the debate because I would have wanted to continue that conversation. Because if you're going to make a cultural argument, well, I mean, we just saw what happened um, in the nation's capital on January 6th. We've seen the vast majority of mass shootings in this country being carried out by white young males. And right. so like making an argument about culture would be fascinating because it's so easy to uh, turn to a different race and how they're overrepresented in a certain type of crime right and and so like the, obviously i'm not buying the cultural argument i think that there yeah. are um various factors that lead to crime um obviously african americans are overrepresented in our criminal justice system especially when you look at the prime example of marijuana use right uh marijuana use clearly very similar uh, rates of use between whites and blacks, yeah. but uh, black individuals are four times more likely to be uh, prosecuted for mm -hmm. simple possession of marijuana. Um, and, and there are other studies like that. So um, there is clearly a bias in our justice system. There's no question about it. We even saw it carried out um, or playing out, I should say, during the Black Lives Matter protests, right? Look, regardless of what you think of Kyle Rittenhouse, and to be honest, after looking at more evidence on that case, mm. I've kind of changed my mind on Kyle Rittenhouse from thinking he's 100% guilty to now thinking the self-defense argument is actually pretty sound. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, he, I mean, I yeah. Mean, he, like, I mean, he's a lunatic who put himself in a situation where that came up, and he's certainly, like, morally very much at fault. But, like, in that moment, mm -hmm. yeah, that's more complicated, you know, like that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, you know, I, I bring, I bring that up because the cops thanked him and offered <laughs> water and like, you know, you're not going to get that kind of treatment if you're a Black Lives Matter protester, no, which, especially which, one who's yeah. a, a minority. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I think we should be really clear too, you know, cause like, I, I think that, um, you know, I think people could hear that and miss the point, you know, that it's like, look, ideally I mean, God, yeah. I mean, I would love it if if that was just the sort of standard thing whenever anybody was arrested, that, you know, that they were treated like a person and, you know, like here's some water, you know, whatever. But like, uh, you know, to put it mildly, not that's, you know, that's not what happens. Um, <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I, I guess just on the larger issue, like it's a little funny because at the beginning of that clip, he does this weird thing. Where, you know, because like he had just said, like at the end of the, 
you know, not going to play critical race theory stuff because it's like, you know, the whole thing's kind of tedious. It's like, okay, you know, what, you know, what, what's, um, you know, what counts as critical race theory and, you know, and, 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 and it's like, this is the stuff they live for, right? You know, like, like, like mm-hmm. that's, that's the argument they want to have 24 seven, you know, is, is there something that, you know, was, was taught, you know, in, in this class, or is there something that was in this proposed curriculum that if you look at it, just the right angle, it seems critical race theory, you know, and, and it's like, and yeah, of course, that's what they want to talk about because because it's it's good for them. They don't want to talk about like why they don't want to give people health care or raise the minimum wage or you know any of that stuff. Uh, but uh, you know, he just said something that sure made it sound like he didn't think that systemic racism existed. And so then you ask him, okay, do you think it doesn't exist? And then you know he, he's quick on his feet. He does he does this very careful weird thing where he's like, well you know it depends what you mean Mm -hmm. and and then he does it really quickly but it's like what he's saying when he says it depends what you mean i think is like a lot of what people do in fact normally mean when they say systemic racism which is uh that the effects of you know of of jim crow and red light and all that stuff you know mean that um that you know, black people and other non-white groups are disproportionately concentrated at the bottom of the the economic ladder, and that like all of these other kind of social ills that come out of that, you know, about crime and poverty, you know, all that stuff, right? You know, come come out of that. And he's and, and for a second there, it seemed like he was acknowledging that, but mm-hmm. then it's it's also really weird because it's like, okay, well, if you're going to acknowledge that, then what's the plan here? I mean, like, like, like do we just live with that forever? Right, exactly. And that's why, I mean, it it would have definitely taken up the majority of the debate if the moderator had allowed us to kind of go down that path. But I think ultimately, the point that I would make, right, Mm -hmm. especially after bringing up the high rates of certain types of crime among like white communities is the issue of poverty. I mean, just the how much people feel the like precarious nature of of making like a living to take care of themselves and their families like we're seeing that impact obviously disproportionately people of color however i mean the white working class has been hit pretty hard blue collar workers have been p- hit pretty hard by globalization um by you know uh, jobs being shipped abroad for to exploit uh even cheaper labor and so like i think you can get back to an economic message if you go down that path. But, you know, I, I felt like the debate, the the main debate, which mm. is what you guys are watching now, which was on that like stage. Mm-hmm. I remember when it ended, I felt really dissatisfied and it wasn't because of like how I performed or whatever, but it was because like, I felt like most of the time I was just trying to get to like, what the debate was really supposed to be about in the first place, you know? And it wasn't until like this final part, which wasn't on uh, the stage. It was, uh, it was for the virtual, uh, uh, chamber of commerce audience where we really got to dig into economic issues. And I was just like, I wish the whole thing was about this because this is what matters. And this is the message I'm at least I'm trying to get across. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, and I think, I mean, I, I guess just to stick with the, the crime thing for just a second, like, you know, if at the end, right, when he said, well, it's neither one, it's not systemic racism, but it's also not, you know, it's also not genetics, it's, right, you know, that like, mm-hmm. like, the reason it would have been so fascinating is because either he says culture, which it seems like he would, right, but like, uh, which, which is, off, which, I mean, okay, one, I don't know. I was thinking about that Liz Brunig thing that like half the point of a debate is to get the other person to tell you whether, you know, like to say what they really think, you know, that like, uh, but, uh, but it's also just like, okay, wait a second. Like, you know, there was some time in the United States where there was like an awful lot more, like, I mean, I don't know, think about like all those smart Scorsese movie about uh, movies about like Irish Catholic gangsters, you know, right. Like, like, is it just that Irish Catholic culture was way worse then, and now the culture is better, you know, like, a, like that doesn't seem very plausible, right. Like that, um, it, it, it seems like it probably has more to do with economic changes, you know, and, totally. and it, you know, it's like, yeah, sure. People in certain groups commit more crimes because people in certain groups live in poverty more and people in poverty, uh, commit more crimes or at least more crimes of the kinds, you know, that he's talking about that are going to get the cops, you know, you know, one of the, one of the arguments that I've always wanted to make in, you know, before Mm. a conservative is 
this common argument that you hear in regard to black families and how, mm -hmm. you know, when they make that cultural argument, they'll usually talk about like, oh, well, where are the fathers? You know, the fathers, they're, they're not around. Where are the fathers? And like, we know what happens to the fathers, right? right? right. Especially considering um, how the justice system works. But one other thing that's always really fascinating to me is how much conservatives tend to contradict themselves. And you're seeing that play out right now in regard to paid family leave. Where you're uh, seeing conservatives like one after the other argue like paternity leaves for pussies. Like, <laughs> no, go go be right beside your boss, back to the mines as soon as your baby's born. Uh, Don't be there for your, right. you know, newborn baby and, and your wife or your your partner. I mean, it's just it shows you how disingenuous that argument really is. Yeah, right. That you know, where are the fathers? Well, apparently they want them to be like not taking any time off work whatsoever. Yeah. No, I mean, and also like okay, when people bring these things up, you know, they, they, uh, I mean, either the sort of like creepy semi-racist version with the, like, where are the fathers thing you're talking about, or like there's another version of this that a lot of social conservatives love. There's, which is the success sequence, which is the idea that you're not going to live in poverty. If you follow these certain steps and you get married and you do this and that. And of course, like the big statistical trick is that they throw in, uh, that you have a full-time job. It's like, yeah, people with jobs are less poor than people who don't have jobs. That's, you know, uh, that's, that's not like controversial, but like, uh, but also like, okay, even when you do have the correlation about the family stuff, you know, like, it's like, yeah, people who live in poverty, right. The rates of, you know, divorce and family breakdown are higher because financial stress makes it harder to keep relationships together. Everybody knows that. And like, if that's where the chain of causation is going, that's like pretty straightforward. Like they all kind of vaguely suggest it's the other way around somehow that like, if you have like good family values, that'll magically make you less poor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fascinating argument, especially when I think most people have experienced firsthand either through their own parents or through the current situation they're in money troubles leads to a lot of heartache and pain right. and, and makes it incredibly difficult to have a happy household. You know, um, I mean, look, I, my parents are immigrants and I grew up in a household where fighting about money was mm -hmm. just a mainstay. And it was really, really difficult growing up. Like my parents stayed together, but the only reason why they stayed together, honestly, after all of that fighting was because of like Armenian conservative culture, like yeah, just right. really, down on you if you if you split up but you know fact of the matter is most relationships end due to money issues and the fact that conservatives like literally want to put obstacles in place for workers to like have a decent living shows you how much they really give a shit about like a happy family you have been watching free public content from give them an argument to access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>